I've been seeing a lot of interesting proposals and discussions on Bulls Twitter and NBA Twitter on some potential options for the Bulls as it relates to addressing their front court issues. And I guess I really shouldn't be saying issues, but their limited front court. And that cannot have been made more clear with losing Patrick Williams earlier on in the season than, of course, most recently with Nikola Vucevic being out due to the health and safety protocol. Do give the Bulls credit, though. They have been holding their own despite having to play a lot of small ball. And yes, Wednesday's loss against the Blazers aside, but even even with the Bulls' success and continuing to play well, they could certainly use some bigger guys on this roster coming off the bench. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about five potential buyout candidates the Bulls could pursue for guys who are currently playing on tanking teams. Also, a big shout out to Thrive Fantasy for sponsoring this video, and you're not going to want to miss this one. They are going to be doing a giveaway for you guys, exclusive for this channel, but more on that in a little bit. So what's going on, everyone? You're listening to Bulls Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Before I get into the content, consider subscribing to the channel as I have set a very aggressive goal for myself of hitting 20,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So if you're new to the channel and like the content, then hit that subscribe button as it would mean a lot to me and I would very much appreciate it. But anyway, so I don't think it's a surprise or news for anyone who has been following the Bulls that their biggest need right now is some big man depth. Like we kind of knew this to be the case before the season started, before even Patrick Williams went down with an injury. We knew that the Bulls were going to be strong in the backcourt, but incredibly limited down low to really just having what you would quote unquote call standard big men in Nikola Vucevic and Tony Bradley. Yes, Simonovic can be lumped into that category as well, but the guy has still yet to play on the court in an NBA game. Now, to be honest, it's probably way too early to discuss this because these five bio candidates I'm about to mention likely won't be bought out, if at all, until after the NBA trade deadline because, of course, they're going to be looking to trade these players even for minimal value rather than losing them for nothing. And not even nothing, they would actually be having to pay to give them up. And I believe most of these guys actually won't be eligible to be bought out until after the trade deadline. But in any event, all of these players currently are playing on bad teams, most of them taking teams who are in full rebuild, or at least said players aren't part of their long-term plans for their respective teams. And all five of these guys I'm going to cover will actually be unrestricted free agents this offseason, meaning they're playing on expiring deals, which means it's less of a risk for the Bulls because their salary won't remain on the books for future seasons, and they can simply just not re-sign them in the offseason if it doesn't work out, which is important because when we've talked about trade options for the Bulls in the past, whether it be for guys like Marvin Bagley, Miles Turner, Bull Bull, and the like, the question most people ask is, well, what about Patrick Williams when he returns? And that's a completely valid point, which is what makes these options so attractive because they would really only be designed to have this player come in for the rest of this season. Keep in mind, these are all bio opportunities. These are not trade proposals that I'll be going over, so they're not going to be as good as some of the trades that we've talked about in the past. And I want to start with a guy that we just saw the other night in Robert Covington. Now, there were some rumors leading up to this season that the Bulls were interested in pursuing Covington in a trade because he was going to be on expiring contract. This was also around the time of all the potential Damian Lillard trade rumors going around, which if the Blazers did in fact trade Lillard, they most likely would have gone into a rebuild mode, which would mean Covington wouldn't fit their agenda and timeline. But even with the team holding on to Lillard, for now anyway, it's likely the Bulls aren't going to uh, be resigning Covington in this offseason. And he could even be a potential buyout candidate if they aren't able to make a trade for him at the deadline. Now, I personally think the Blazers will be able to find a trade for Covington because he is more valuable than some of the other guys that I'm going to cover. You would have to think that you could at least get a second round pick in exchange for Covington if you're Portland. But either way, I think this would be a big pickup for the Bulls if they were able to sign Covington to a vet minimum deal if he was in fact bought out. Now keep in mind, if the Bulls were to sign any player who becomes a free agent by way of a buyout, they would have to waive someone on the roster to make room for them as the Bulls are currently at the 15 player max roster spots a team can have and I think most likely a person to be waived would be Matt Thomas who is really the 15th man on this roster and has barely seen any playing time on the court but as for Robert Covington I mean you're talking about a guy 
who was an all-defensive team player back in 2018. A lot of people forget about that. He has dropped off a bit with, you know, in terms of his overall production, especially on offense. He's not the player that he used to be putting up 12 to 13 points per game, but he gives you size, solid defense, and rim protection, added rebounding, and he's actually a very capable outside shooter, which allows the Bulls to spread the floor even more. Covington is shooting near 40% from three this season. This would be a huge pickup for the Bulls if they were able to get him off the buyout market. But really... When you look at a guy like Covington, what he brings as a player, I have a hard time seeing the Blazers buying him out. Either they would look to trade him before the deadline, or they just simply keep him for the remainder of the season and let him walk in free agency if they don't want to re-sign him. The next guy is a potential buyout option, and I've talked about him before as well, is Tristan Thompson. It's funny, I think I was talking about Thompson last season before the Bulls made the trade for Vucevic, not really thinking that this front office was going to be as aggressive as they were at the trade deadline, but for someone like Thompson, a guy who is on a bad Sacramento Kings team, a guy who isn't happy and doesn't want to be in Sacramento, and yes, he's fallen off as well, but what Thompson does bring is championship experience, size, rebounding, again, something the Bulls need, especially when Vucevic isn't in the lineup or sitting on the bench to get a breather, and he can give you some scoring as well. Thompson isn't a good defender, though, I'll admit that, and the Bulls are going to need more defense in the front court without Patrick Williams, and I don't know if you guys caught Thompson's post-game presser from the other night, but he was essentially talking about how you shouldn't need a coach to motivate you and inspire you to play your best basketball and how you should be giving maximum effort 100% of the time. Like that's the type of mentality we want on this Bulls team. And again, I know Tristan Thompson isn't the player that he used to be, but someone that can bring that mental toughness is incredibly valuable when building out the culture of this team. Now, before I get into the other guys on this list, a quick word from the sponsor of this video who has been very generous enough to not only sponsor the video, but they're also so giving you guys the opportunity to be entered into a jersey giveaway of your choice. Not only that, but they're also going to match your first deposit on the app all the way up to $100. Yes, that's a free $100 to you guys just for signing up with the app and making a deposit. Thrive Fantasy is a daily fantasy sports and esports app for player props. With Thrive, you can eliminate those countless hours of research and focus only on top tier athletes that have the biggest impact on the game. Thrive's featured $50,000 guaranteed contract contest is only $20 to enter and first place prize takes home $20,000. So not only can you win a Bulls jersey, but you could also win $20,000. So use promo code Bulls when you sign up today and you will receive a 100% instant first deposit. And if you do a minimum of $10, you will automatically be entered into the jersey giveaway, which will remain open until Black Friday next Friday, at which point a winner will be selected. Download Thrive Fantasy on the App Store or Play Store or by visiting their website at Thrive Fantasy com or I have a direct link with my code that can be found in the description and now with that out of the way let's get back into the content so the next guy who is an intriguing option for the Bulls is Chris Boucher and to be honest he's probably the most ideal candidate for the Bulls among these five players because Boucher had a great season last year with the Raptors and with the direction the Raptors are taking with the priority being around building around Scotty Barnes, Fred Van Fleet, Pascal Siakam, Boucher has kind of been thrown to the wayside. Boucher went from being a player who was getting 24 minutes a game last season to now 13, and his production has fallen off completely as a result to where he was shooting 51% last year, now 37%, averaging 13.6 points per game last year to now five. And the thing I like about Boucher is one, he's a great defender, a great shot blocker, a decent rebounder. And I think if given an opportunity on a new team that is going to need him, which he currently doesn't feel like he has a need in Toronto, we can likely see a similar Chris Boucher to what we saw last year. It won't be the same, obviously, because he had a big role on a bad Raptors team last year, and even if the Bulls picked him up as a free agent after being bought out, he's not going to see the floor time that he saw last season. But with no Patrick Williams and the fact that the Bulls don't really have a power forward outside of Alizé, who isn't getting much playing time, this would give Boucher ample opportunity coming off the bench while Patrick is out. And who knows, maybe like Javante Green, he could get some starting minutes in that role. The other thing I like about Boucher more so than these other guys is that he's younger. He's only 28 while the rest of these options are all in their 30s. The next guy on this list who was a former number one recruit coming out of high school and a former number three overall pick and that's Derek Favors. You know, Favors had some great seasons with the Utah Jazz, but then kind of got put to the wayside when Rudy Gobert really emerged as an all-star and the Jazz main go-to big man. And of course, Favors is nothing like the player he used to be on the Jazz. But now, 
on a Thunder team who is also rebuilding and looking to stack draft capital and young players, Favors simply just doesn't fit on that roster. And to be honest, he's the most likely player on this list to actually be bought out because I can't see the Thunder being able to find a trade for him and it would make way more sense for them to buy him out rather than letting him sit on the roster for the rest of the season. Like some of these other players, you know, what Favors gives you is of course size, he's still a solid rebounder and he can score at a reasonable rate. He's not the defender that he used to be, but he can give you moderate defense, but he's great when it comes to crashing the glass on offense and getting second chance opportunities and scoring in the restricted area. And more importantly, veteran experience, which can't be understated, especially when it comes to entering into the playoffs. And then finally, the last player on this list, a former Bulls legend, a mascot bully, a man who threw a chair in front of me after being ejected in a game in Sacramento, our guy, Robin Lopez. Now, Robin and Lopez is kind of at that point in his career where he's likely only got another year or two before he retires. And Lopez, if he did join the Bulls roster, he's not going to be the same Rolo we saw back when he was with the Bulls. But what he would bring to this Bulls roster, aside from his size, because he's really actually the biggest guy on this whole list at seven feet, uh, but more so it's his energy and pestering of opposing teams that could be of value to the Bulls, aside from his ability to get offensive rebounds, block shots here and there. Like, to be honest, this is probably the the worst of all of these options, but I think it's intriguing because Rolo is a fan favorite and the excitement that he would bring to the fan base would bring about an even greater sense of energy from the fans and for the team as a whole. All in all, though, I'll say I think the best option would be Chris Boucher and then probably a second option would be Tristan Thompson. I do think Covington would be a huge pickup as well, but I struggled to see either of these guys actually getting bought out. However, it could be an opportunity for the Bulls to buy low in the form of a trade for some of these guys. But I want to know what you guys think between these five players. Which player do you think would be the best fit for the Bulls and their current needs? Let me know in the comments. And of course, as always, be sure to subscribe if you're a Bulls fan as I do post daily Bulls content. Thanks again for tuning in, guys, and I will catch you in the next one.